Hi folks. So, uh, I was having kind of a slow day at work, and a friend of mine, uh, ran into a little bit of an emergency at his job, and he needed to, uh, pick a lock really, uh, quick, and he didn't, he didn't have any, uh, tools with him, but he did have paper clips and, uh, pliers, and so I was walking him through it, uh, and just to make sure I wasn't, uh, giving him completely the wrong story, I was making them uh, as I walked him along, and really all you need are some of the slightly thicker than standard uh, paper clips and a pair of pliers. And you too can have emergency uh, picking tools in just a couple of minutes. So first thing is we'll go over how to make the tension tool. Uh, so you have the slightly wider end and the slightly narrower end. The wider end uh, will still usually be small enough to fit into the keyway of a wafer lock. And so what I like to do there is just take it like this in the jaws of the plier and put a slight bend in it, like that. And that way, similar to the wishbone tension tool that I think of, I've shown you once or twice, uh, you have a little bit of open space because uh, this will stand off to the side. And then on the other end, to make your uh, uh, pin tumbler turning tool, you're going to want to grasp the middle of the of the paper clip pretty solidly. There we go. And you're going to go way down here. Give it plenty of room. Because if you get it too close to the end, it will bend in such a way that you're going to just make it a mess. I'm just going to pinch it ever so carefully like that and you want to leave uh, the end relatively wide so that it will grasp the keyway pretty firmly and securely and then you're just going to put a nice bend in it like that and there you go that's your double-ended tension tool so we'll put that aside for the moment Next thing is you're going to need a pick. So, uh, what I usually do is I unwind this long end. And I'm just going to want to very carefully straighten it out. Ease it out there, because if you strain it, it's going to weaken the metal even more. And this right here, where the curve was, is always going to be a little bit of a soft spot. Uh, now, you're just going to take your pliers and put a very small bend in the end, like that. It's very shallow. And you're going to work your way down the shaft, a little bit by a little bit, just putting very small bends in it until you form a hook. Now, depending on the type of locks that you're going to be dealing with, you may want a small hook like this, you may want something very deep and extreme like a gonzo or a postal hook uh, you know just keep in mind of what you're expecting to encounter uh, so there we go got a nice little sort of small or medium hook going there uh, and then to strengthen it a little bit what I like to do is take this end of the wire right here and I'm going to just wrap it around the handle you can get it started like that and then take the uh, pliers, reach in there, and twist it like so. You may have to do it a couple of times, and you're going to have to help the pliers along a little bit. If you're careful about it, in the end, you get a much stronger handle than you would have otherwise. It really helps brace the rest of the pick tool. So that way, you get a little bit of reinforcement and it doesn't uh, squish so easily. So I know, it looks kind of crude, and it is, but trust me, this does work. Now, to make a rake-style tool, like this one, 
uh, you're going to start off the same way as we did the hook. And unwind this, very carefully straighten out the shaft. And get it as straight as you can. You're not going to want to pinch it with the pliers to flatten it out. But this one, what you're going to do is you're going to grasp the very, very end with the tip of the pliers. You're going to put a very sharp bend on it, as sharp as the size and shape of the tip of your pliers will allow. You're going to go down, then you're going to go up, and then you're going to go down, and you're going to go up again. You're going to just keep doing that until you have the desired number of humps. And at the end, you straighten it out a little bit. And there you go, that's your rake tool. And again, we're going to wrap the wire around. To help reinforce that handle. going around a couple times. There we go. You don't want that bit of wire on the end to be jabbing you in the hand all the time while you're trying to work. So there we have our little improvised rake and hook. I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. You want to get as close as you can to the general shape of one of the real uh, commercial produced tools. Now let's see just how well these things actually work. So these are the ones I made this afternoon, these are the ones I just made on camera for you. And let's start off with, uh, this is from Tools Progressive Set, it's a three pin lock. Uh, there's nothing special in here, just three standard pins. We're going to take the squished end of our paper clip, insert it in there so that it sits as neatly as possible in the uh, keyway. Okay. There we go. And let's start off attempting to rake this. Because again, it's an improvised situation, it's an emergency. These tools are only so good and they only last so long. You don't want to be too violent with it, but you are going to have to be kind of firm because the angle, because the working face of the pick is not going to be as smooth and well polished as a commercially produced pick or one that you've had time to really work in. Okay, let's get that seated in there again. And let's try this one more time. Helps if I, oh, there we go. So, we've opened a three pin lock, but you don't encounter those very often. Here's a cheap little knockoff of the master lock number three that I picked up at a, a drugstore. Again, insert into the keyway so that it sits firmly. Uh, sometimes you can use the outside of the paper clip uh, to help you reduce the tension because these things do tend to require a little bit of force to really stay in and work. And then we're going to just work that rake in. Okay, too much tension. Work it in. In and out, in and out, in and out. Okay, so it's not open yet, but I think it was responding to our rake, so we're going to go in with the hook and try to finish this guy off. Again, your uh, feedback is going to be nowhere near as good as you would get on a commercial pick, but it's going to be a lot better than nothing at all. Just 
work our way, trying to be as precise as possible. Because again, lock picking, particularly when you're SPPing or single pin picking, uh, precision still counts for a lot. Feels like it's coming along. Almost got it. Back off the tension a little bit. They're tough to get these improvised hooks uh, exactly centered under the pin. They like to slip off. Well, we had three, it sounded like. Let's try this again. Yeah, let's try the one I made earlier today, because I think I did a slightly better job on that one. Okay, reset. There we go. I think I'd overset something. it off with this hook. Now I'm just making myself look like an idiot. There we go. And Finally, the Master 141. This should be a real challenge for improvised tools because this does actually include a couple of spools. But we're going to go in. Okay, we've got a decent false set going. And we're going to take that hook and reach in there. Find that one last. Okay. So we're caught up on a spool. We've set that, but it tripped something else. Okay, it's not number one. Okay, reset. And there we go. All done. So you can see that these things do work. They look crude. They are crude. And, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to use them in a competition. But they will get you in when you really need it. So until next time, everyone, have fun, happy picking, and uh, always keep a couple of paper clips in your pocket.